Welcome back everyone to another episode of Civil Textures. In this video, we're gonna be looking at Side 3D new release version 6, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, or 6.01. Now, they've uploaded a bunch of features that I've been waiting for a long time to see on softwares. As per other Side 3D videos, in this video, we'll be running a promotional discount of 5% if you use the promo code CTSSUM. The promo code is valid until the end of August. So if you actually really like Side 3D and you wanna purchase it and get a little bit of discount, then use CTS Summer. And without further ado, let's begin. So our first feature is the water flow from a certain point. The name is on the box. Basically, we click somewhere and we can see where the water would go. The water can flow or it can crash. So it's in the spot annotation tools. And if we go to the water flow from point at cursor location, so it's the third icon, we will have to select first our surface. In our case, we're gonna do the topographical survey just so we can see where our water actually flows currently. So you can see when I hover my mouse, it automatically tries to draw the polyline where it hovers, which is always nice to see on softwares where they actually update live. So there we go. So you can see here my site at the southwestern corner falls towards the northeast but as soon as i move towards the actual south it falls towards the east so if i left click you can see it creates a line and then i can just actually draw as many lines as i need to prove a point now the next feature is related again with the surface but this one is one of my favorites let's call it hacks because that way i can check if my site topo or the proposed one mainly if it's within the gradient ranges that i would like so let's bring our 3d model i've created this uh, 3d surface here so i'm gonna go to surface and create my final surface and you can see we've got the surface here okay so now what i would like to know is whether i have any gradients that exceed the one and two well i cannot just keep going using the gradient tool and on the final surface and just checking okay here what is it one in nine okay from here to here what is it one in ten i can it's not efficient so the quickest way you would do it is to usually color grade your surface based on the gradients and side 3d have introduced that so if we go right click and we go to properties and we select our final surface in the colors and the surface display a group box we have this option of gradient bands and you can see they've already preset some gradients for us so i would keep the 150 100 as bluish and then the 180 i'll just make it green as like it passed the check mark one in 20 a lime green maybe just to be like hey be time but worry of that one in 12 orange and the one in three yellow to know in steep and then anything below the one in three i'll just keep it as red by looking at my model you can see that these embankments are like one in th less than one in three so i'll probably have to come and fix them so if i go to my platform design tool and in the interface i'm gonna fix this you can see it was one in two i'm gonna make it one in 18 just so and fix so now you can see that if i recreate the final surface and then just go properties again and colors and just do the gradients as i wish they've reset it but let's do the one in three as yellow and the one in zero as red just to highlight it you can see they're no longer there and i would like to keep always my flat surfaces as blue because that way i can identify if i have any flat surfaces you can see here that i actually have a flattish surface here so the ffl is pretty much flat with the footpath in the final surface so if i bring my layers and turn off the top model you can see that it's relatively flat and if we go look at the 3d there but if i raise my finished photo over the building and then rebuild the surface then probably that should fix the issues so now the next feature is probably uh, will be well accepted by all the resi project lovers oh my so it's the plot numbering and the plot setting out table so it's pretty straightforward we've got the plot number so when we click on it we can set a prefix and the number or name so we're gonna do number one so i can do plot one plot two three four five six seven you can see i already run the command once and then if i want to do the garages so g and then i start one again for garage one 
uh, it would be garage two that would be garage six so i just can type here six because it would have followed four so here is seven so i'll click seven eight and then when i click on the add building pad setting out table it shows you the extent of the table and if i click on it you can see garage one garage two garage three and in the brackets is the actual name type so if we go to the house type manager you can see i've got garage and garage two so it's like for single or double and then we've got the house types h414 now you can see it add some id points a b c with the east things and north things so if i go to plot one you can see now in plot one it has some three points a b and c which is great and yeah, it creates a table automatically for you, which will save loads of loads of time. Now, the next feature is something that I was really hoping to see in one of the engineering softwares to be implemented on. It's basically trying to figure out the whole run system by itself based on the outfall. So in my case, I've designed a very shallow pond. So I think it's like half a meter only. You can see it's barely like it, there's no depth and i've set up a head wall at the inverse level of the pond and when i've drawn the side 3d like the drainage i didn't give that much attention in setting up the others invert level now let's say i want to work out from here backwards and see if i actually have sufficient cover they've introduced this drainage auto sizing and leveling which is great but before we do that we need to give kudos to side 3d that they've actually added the m5 16 ratio r map and it will pick up if your site is an os grid and it'll show you in a green x like this but in our case my site i believe is not an os grid setup so i'm just gonna click on a random i'm in birmingham so click birmingham and then hit ok it'll pick up now when we go to the drainage auto sizing and leveling it will prompt us to select the outfall manhole so in our case it's the head wall it will pick up the outfall invert level and we can adjust it but for this purpose just to demonstrate what would happen i'm just going to click cancel and just to rotate the zoom just so we can pick up the changes there we go perfect now when i select the last manhole i can adjust the maximum gradient desire minimum cover if i have to the pond head wall it will do it pond base level and then we have some auto sizing features so you can see we can have the minimum diameter for a private and for adopted and also the sizing style basically we can set it to increase only so if you fiddled around the pipe diameters and have adjusted some and you just want to double check the sizing you can have it to increase only without them starting at the minimum diameter and doing it all over again so if it's 150 and you already had it at 300 then it will not change it when you have the increase only option then we have the design storm settings and you can click on the map here and access it again and also we have the return period duration and summer for the auto sizing because all this right hand column is for the auto sizing we're gonna do winter and we're gonna do 15 for the 100 year i know we don't usually do that it's the simulation that we run it but for the sake of this video let's do it so if i hit okay now you will see a few things a information message box appears and says try an invert level of 14.2 or lower to auto level the network with the minimum pipe cover and gravity so basically it's telling us hey based on the outfall invert level you do not have sufficient cover based on the parameters that you gave us therefore we probably put a concrete protection or maybe your pipe will be sticking out of the ground and it says that five manholes failed to meet the minimum cover after auto leveling so if i zoom in more in the 3d let's undock it and uh, full screen you can see that we already started needing concrete protection here and you can see we need it all the way so it doesn't work so what we will have to do is just bring it down as per their message so what i'm gonna do now is bring my pond down so let's just dock this one back so we can see what we're doing so we're gonna go to our earthworks and pond tools select our pond drop it to 14 just for the sake of it and then we're going to go to our drainage tools and manhole properties and drop it to invert level of 14 that easy yes you can see it dropped the head wall now if i run the auto size tool i expect these to be all gone so if i go to auto size and select the last manhole and hit ok no information error message box and you can see the runs have been adjusted accordingly and you can see we have the gradients so the steepest you can go for the 150 is 150 so i picked that one up so that's perfect if you wanted to start at 225 for example i can click on this one and just say i was 225 for private and it because it's a star minimum diameter we set this one as the minimum so if i hit okay you can see now there's 225 and the gradient increase to reach the maximum capacity of the 225 pipe in terms of flatness now the other cool feature of the auto size is this we need to adjust this one first to have a clash so let's see what invert level we need to have it at so if we go to our drainage tools and just go 
properties and just see 14.59 okay we're gonna switch to file and go to any properties and let's change this one to 14.59 let's see and uh, actually let's bring it higher so 50 that looks like a clash to me if you ask me actually let's bring it even higher that's a clash there so and i'm gonna bring this manhole up as well just to show you uh let's say 14.8 okay so we have a clash here right so in the auto sizing tool apart from auto sizing the drainage as well you can auto size the file so you can highlight the file but first i'm gonna make sure my file is set up to be an outfall yeah it's correct there we go and we go to auto sizing we select our outfall and i click on the file force below storm now site 3d said that basically the file will check the nearest storm and try to keep a minimum clearance distance so we have it here at 150 and drop file when near to storm i think that's the distance that picks up like if it's within seven meters and try to drop it down so if i hit ok you can see it tells us try an invert level 13.674 or lower the auto level so i'm gonna go and use auto size again and do 13.5 five for example as it prompted me and you can see now it didn't throw any error message and it re lowered it down and all the gradients should have been completed so yeah that is great so you can see it did it one in 13 one in 60 one in 60 and then here one in 13 just because we wanted that outfall so it kept the pipes as fast as possible now the other cool feature regards in terms of drainage which i really glad this came out is the drainage areas it's my worst nightmare to draw drainage areas and assigning them to pipes i know the technology improved throughout time like with uh, like smart tools micro drainage like uh, third plugins etc but it's always easier to just click instead of actually draw the polylines not all of us have the luxury of having colleagues that they can do it for us so in the drainage drainage area tools i'm gonna click on the new drainageable area and when i click right click instead of new line and select line we have two new options select building and select path drive now if i click on building i can actually hover and select the house that i've decided so let's say i click on this one now it's asking me which pipe do you want it well for this i want this building for this one and you can do the whole side drainage area probably within minutes for example if i click on this one and put it back here so that is sorted and this one there and these here and then i'll put the garage over here now if i right click again and go select path drive i can set the path drives now and you can see it draws the polyline and shows me the area as well you can even select the footpaths that is crazy now i would love to see also to select road section so basically you know how we do the curb tools so we can basically tell them that's the start change and end change a similar option maybe for the drainage area tools we select the road and we tell that that's the start point of the area till the end because once we click the gullies to show the gullies in the road then we know that these gullies pick up basically everything from here all the way to here so that would be a cool feature to see in the next update if site 3d is watching this video i hope you find this video useful and and if you actually would like to purchase the site 3D, don't forget to use the CTS summer promo code to get a 5% discount. So drop a like if you like the video, subscribe if you'd like to see more content, and I'll see you in the next video.